Hey guys, Mario here with TCG Hut, and we're at Black Knight Games in Hamilton, Ontario. Just finished up a tournament. We have Gregory Titov here. He is the champion for tonight, correct, sir? Yep, first place. Alrighty, and what are you playing? I am playing Kane Agro. Kane Agro. Excuse what me? made you decide to play Kane? Yeah, in general, it seems like a bit more of a good departure from the normal like Bahamut and whatnot as an aggro thing. It allows you an element of control if you want to like flip it and like just pew off all your opponent's things. Uh, this seems pretty solid, especially against like any sort of aggro mirror. So you can just like remove whatever you need to, whenever you need to. Awesome. All right. So, uh, what do you want to start with? We're obviously starting with the main deck. You want to start with one drops, two drops, or you got it all mixed up? Oh, I kind of have it a bit mixed up, honestly. All right. Well, just go ahead. Do your thing. So, first, because we're playing Kane, we want to be able to first swing as soon as possible, and also possibly get a turn one flip. So we have four of Levitan. Awesome. It goes really well with his ability, seeing as okay, it turns his. Red pings a thing for 200 to 400 or even more. You can just kind of get to the point where you like taking out wyverns for one red. It's just really silly. The turn one flip of like playing a lave, just playing a lave to like flip him. It's really solid in general. It's overall just a really good card in this deck. Then after that we kind of have a bit of a stereotypical red build. We have four of lance. No big shocker. Good like good card. Kind of just a powerhouse and force of will. Four egg. Four Cthulhu. The, the synergy is kind of just. I don't think much needs to be said about like Egg and Cthulhu. You play Egg, you incarnate Cthulhu. From there, typically, I kind of go for a bit more of an angle of, okay, instead of getting a Cthulhu right after, I typically try to go a bit more wide and, and get like a second Egg out, so I had probably two Cthulhu swinging. I feel wide's a bit better than like just straight in, like some Baja Blast decks do. Yeah. I, I would agree on that. I just I actually played against Baja Blast, but unfortunately, my deck failed to. Uh, Deal with it as normally would. Yeah, I managed to get there, but it wasn't be by going wide, it's by getting lucky with one card we'll see in a bit. I also have four Guinevere's because in this deck, it's just worst case scenario, I toss it out to get a Cthulhu out, or even just play as play it for one and end up drawing two, discarding one. Kind of filter through for the horrifying parts. Just a good card in general. After that, we have four Thunder, another big shock card. It's really done a lot of work today. Good card. What can I say? Like, I, I literally took someone down from 20 last round. Four Thunder when they tapped out. The Quad Thunder. It does work. Then we have a bit of a meta choice here in Triple Split. Obviously because I am pretty dang heavy in red, I have only literally one non-basic red stone. This is typically at least deal 600 if not more. It's honestly a little bit like lackluster today based on like just the decks I played. But in general, it's a really good card usually to kind of just make them really fear something, you know? Oh, I know the fear because I've faced that down and playing against you several times, and I hate it. Then we have something a little bit more just techy that I want to try around. Three Beowulf the Blazing Wolf. Wow, werewolves. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think anybody's ever played werewolves here. Um, probably not. In general, it's a 3-5 with whatever it deals damage to a resonator or your opponent, it doubles that damage. It combos very well with another card we have a three of in here today, that being Poison Apple. The combination makes it for 26 damage on turn three. Or even more if you just kind of get to the silly point with a little red or something. It would be a really good way to like close out a game. Poison Apple is just a the type of thing where it is one card, 1,000 damage whenever you toss it in. Yep. You kind of need to angle it a bit right when your opponent's playing more of a control deck or they might have removal, but... If you make it land, it kind of puts a big dent, shockingly enough. After that, we have Snow White, two of, solid three three drop. We don't want to have too many three drops because obviously we're kind of on the aggro side, but still, it's good enough and it can kind of do the work. After that, two Amino Habakiris. We have four of Lance, we have two Snow White. It's a very good card in general. Kind of goes well with Beowulf, not really as spectacular since it doesn't double the damage again. But hey, doing 1,400 and then 14 to their face is pretty solid. After that, we have three one-ups. First, Maribel. This is because, as Kane, we typically want to flip him as soon as possible and get in for it. Because of that, Flame of the Outer World's kind of a big big stopping point. Maribel, one-up in the main, is the kind of thing where we kind of just... We usually don't keep it out, honestly, unless we expect to be playing some sort of deck with Regalia or Flame. But it does do work occasionally. And at the end, it has come up with a key moment or two. After that, we have one of Hector, because four Lancelots, four Cthugas. It's just like 
It could kind of be like one red deal 400 damage at the right time. It's or essentially just, a burn spell. Yeah, pretty much. Or just toss it down and carry another Cthulhu. And then we have one that really shone today, one of Susanoo in the main. Facing Baja Blast earlier, literally every single game ended up with me tutoring this off of an egg and playing it on three to either just try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, ba with Bahamut or just go for face. It did a lot of damage, and I, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with it. Awesome. Pretty good on common. Now for stones, we just have nine, nine flame fire and little red because it's a really good stone, makes the color we want, and it buffs our resonators. There's literally no downside. And last. Sideboard? Yep. So for the sideboard, we have one of Rapid Decay, good one cost way to deal with like problem resonators, used against Lancelot, used against Morganas. Pretty to be solid. To honest, that was an all star in my deck today, having the two main. It just, Lancelot's just died. It, just, it, it dealt with so much stuff that uh, I probably would have lost even more horribly if it wasn't for those cards. It may be just a champ, but it is just quick enough. Then on top of that, we have Little Dread, the fake red moon. It's a really horrifying mid-game card that, honestly, when facing down Reflect Refrain, they have very little to deal with it effectively. Typically, they try to deal with like resonators by bouncing them repeatedly, and with Dread, it doesn't quite work out. You have to either remove their resonators repeatedly, like I did today, or just swing in every turn and make them have to hold up the counters. We have a second Maribel for when we do encounter decks that we do know have Flame of Outer World, or just heavy Regalia decks again. We have a third Ame, in case we do get to a bit more, bit more of a mid-range thing, where, again, that kind of thing can just close it out. And we don't expect that many removals on our Blanks Lots or anything like that. After that, three Crime and Punishment. This is a thing... Three. Yeah. It seems pretty dang horrifying, seeing as most times... I've seen a lot of decks that just pump Lancelots on the attack rather than anything else. So after they kind of like ping whatever guy you have, this just finishes them off before he actually like hits your face. In general, against Bahamut earlier, it was an all-star. Just closed out the Cthulhu train pretty early on. It's in general a really good removal spell for like one at instant. Then, because I know we have a Vlad player here, Serto. Stops all gaining of life, and whenever a Resonator dies, each player takes one. Adds up, and when Vlad doesn't really gain life, it's a bit of a really slow clock for them. So that was pretty easy to raise down at that point. After that, we have two Flame King's Shouts. Again, just a board wipe. Knocks out a lot of really like smaller things. Playing against something like Alice's World, and knocks out anything they might have, and then it swings in with something horribly, well, aggressive. Then we have two of Demon Flame. Bit here. Just another like one drop removal spell. Hits most key things you want to. Stops a Thug train. Can add up with one resonator to like kill something larger if you need to. I've had that happen a couple times, not today luckily. And then finally we have two Guild Arrays. This is a card that I haven't actually played that much in this deck. It's just kind of a thought of if we do get to a really grindy type of matchup. Guild Arrays is really hard to deal with unless they counter it. Swings up for 20 or 20 or even more, like on turn six, it can really close out a game really quickly. Are there any decks that come to mind in particular that you'd board that in against? Uh, probably something like Vlad. Any other really horrifying control decks? Maybe Dark Alice, because they wouldn't need the the black up to actually exile it when the trigger's there. Otherwise, he does just come right back and swing back in. So after that, the deck performed very well today. I'm pretty dang happy with it. I might change the Beowulf balancing because while it was a good card, there were a few times where I kind of just tossed it away on the mulligan or it was just, I didn't really want to play it. At the same time, the few times I did play it, the people did the people I played against did seem a little, they seemed to respect it as a card that could be horrifying in the right circumstance. They kind of just tossed it whatever they could out to get it done. It's just something unfamiliar, right? They're not used to seeing it, so. Yeah, and the thought that even like Little Red becomes plus four, plus four is pretty gross. Awesome. So, any final thoughts? Wisdom? Anything? Um, in general, I feel Kane's a really good just mirror type, mirror breaker type thing, and that he just gives you a lot more angles to shoot with. No pun intended. He's a very just strong card. Getting him on turn one doesn't actually like hurt you for aggro. Doesn't keep you a one stone. Well, unless you still keep on the pressure. I, I'm surprised fewer like there aren't any, there aren't as many people playing Kane. Even with Flames of the Outer World being a card, he is still horrifying. Awesome. Well, there you have it, folks. You heard it from the champ. For tonight, that is. We won't know what happens next week. We do. <laughs> Look at this cocky guy. All right, well, Mario with TCG Hut here. 
And we're out. Have a good night, guys. Quad Thunder. Fortunately, my deck failed to uh, deal with it as it normally would. Yeah, I managed to get there, but it wasn't be by going wide, it's by getting lucky with one card we'll see in a bit. I also have four Guinevere's because in this deck, it's just worst case scenario, I toss it out to get a Cthulhu out, or even just play as, play it for one and end up drawing two, discarding one. Kind of filter through for the horrifying parts. Just a good card in general. After that, we have four Thunder, another big shock card. It's really done a lot of work today. Good card. What can I say? Like, I, I literally took someone down from 20 last round. Four Thunder when they tapped out. Alright, so uh, what do you want to start with? We're obviously starting with the main deck. Are you going to start with one drops, two drops, or you got it all mixed up? Oh, I kind of have it a bit mixed up, honestly. Alright, well, just go ahead. Do your right. thing. So, first, because we're playing Kane, we want to be able to first swing as soon as possible, and also possibly get a turn one flip, so we have four of Levitin. Awesome. It goes really well with his ability, seeing as, okay, it turns his red pings a thing for 200 to 400 or even more. You can just kind of get to the point where you like taking out Wyverns for one red. It's just really silly. The turn one flip of like playing a lave, just playing a lave to like flip him. It's really solid in general. It's overall just a really good card in this deck. Then after that, we kind of have a bit of a stereo. Hey guys, Mario here with TCG Hut, and we're at Black Knight Games in Hamilton, Ontario. We just finished up a tournament. We have Gregory Titov here. He is the champion for tonight, correct, sir? Yep, first place. Alrighty, and what are you playing? I am playing Kane Agro. Kane Agro. Excuse what me. made you decide to play Kane? Yeah, in general, it seems like a bit more of a good departure from the normal like Bahamut and whatnot as an aggro thing. It allows you the element of control if you want to like flip it and like just pew off all your opponent's things. Uh, yeah, just seems pretty solid, especially against like any sort of aggro mirror. So you can just like remove whatever you need to whenever you need to. Awesome. Quad Thunder. It does work. Then we have a bit of a meta choice here in triple split. Obviously, because I am pretty dang heavy in red. I have only literally one non-basic redstone. This is typically at least deals 600, if not more. It's honestly a little bit like lackluster today, based on the, like just the decks I played. But in general, it's a really good card usually to kind of just make them really fear something, you know? Oh, well, I know the fear because I've faced that down and playing against you several times, and I hate it. Then we have something a little bit more just techy that I want to try around. Three Beowulf, the blade, typical red build. We have four of Lance, no big shocker, good like good card, kind of just a powerhouse in Force of Will. Four Egg, four Cthulhu. The, the synergy's kind of just... I don't think much needs to be said about Egg and Cthulhu. You play Egg, you incarnate Cthulhu. From there, typically, I kind of go for a bit more of an angle of, okay, instead of getting a Cthulhu right after, I typically try to go a bit more wide and, and get like a second Egg out, so I'm going to have probably two Cthulhu swinging. I feel wide's a bit better than like just straight in like some Baja Blast decks do. Yeah, I, I would agree on that. I just I actually played against Baja Blast, but 